And now, without further ado, syempre excited na tayo. It is now my privilege to introduce to you our first speaker for this morning. So, ano kaya itong in-store sa atin ang first speaker? So, he is a business consulting partner experienced in helping clients protect their business performance by addressing technology risks that rise from changes in company strategies and initiatives, advances in technology and overall digital complexity, helps assess the IT infrastructure and security arrangement in diverse computerized environment, create, computerized, create trust and confidence in financial reporting, provide trusted communication and assurance and internal controls, identity, improve and respond to technology risks, meet evolving regulatory and compliance requirements, control compliance costs, and undertake proactive technology risk mitigation. He also works with clients in the telecom forms, ISAE 3402 reviews, SOX 404 compliance reviews, application controls, and security reviews and IT audit audit support, supporting audits for financial statements. He also advises companies on their annual sustainability reporting using the Global Reporting Initiative Framework. He is also a SecCred accredited speaker on sustainability reporting, a certified information system auditor, a certified internal auditor, a certified sustainability reporting specialist, a certified public accountant, sana all, member of the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, a member of the Information System and Control Association, a member of the Institute of Internal Auditor, and also a Bachelor of Science degree in Accountancy, graduated at University of Santo Tomas. Yan guys, let us welcome Mr. Conrad Allen M. Alvis, CPA, CISA, CIA, CSRS for his talk about Certified Information System Auditor, Account Talk, Dialogue to the Future Self. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning Keith and Weejay. I hope you had a great uh, morning. Kumain na ba kayong dalawa? And, and I hope you're also <laughs> excited for your day two of Certified Future Accountants Day. So please allow me to share my screen. Okay. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, sir. We can now see your okay, screen. Paul. Okay, right. so again, a good morning, uh, NFJP Region 4. No? Uh, and of course, to your president, Caitlin, uh, thank you for inviting SGV and company, inviting me in this um, very important milestone of your region. No? So this morning, so I, I was asked to, uh, to talk about no, CISA, no? one of uh, the in the uh, global certifications that I hope that all of you uh, will highly consider no, after uh, after you take the board exam for CPAs. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. This is a short background of mine. Okay. Before I start, no, I would like to to share with you, no. And hello, uh, by the way, hello to our, our four JPNs in Facebook Live. So I just want to share with you my career journey you know, after I graduated in two. I started as a college student. No, I graduated from the University of Santo Tomas and then I was an officer of my local chapter. That's why no, I'm still here. No, even until now, I'm still connected with, with NFJP. Yeah? And then after I graduated, of course, I took the, the CPA board exam. No. Lalo na ngayon, I know it's more difficult in your situation right now that you are um, doing it. Uh, through online not online platform no so uh, i graduated no as a If 
like some no and also struggle in my financial accounting no and and when i joined no and i joined sgv i'm choosing between different service lines audit i'm and then uh, advisory tax no and i was uh, invited no to join it audit later on the, 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 the next speaker after me is the reason why i joined it audit because he's my cl a close friend of mine no also a, a jpian and then he told me, Con, let's go to IT audit instead of audit and tax. Okay, so I believe him. So I joined SGV as an IT auditor. And then later on in my career, after around two and a half years, no, I decided to take my next certification no, as a CISA. No, initially I'm doing my I'm doing IT audit work for the first two and a half years. And then later on, no, I expanded my my portfolio and become an IT risk practitioner. So I'm not only doing IT audit, but I'm also now doing IT process reviews, you no, know, or even business process reviews supported by IT, IT infrastructure. So I took the CISA exam and then I passed the same year and then became a member of ISACA. You no, know? and then later on in my career, after I think around 2010, I those those were the times that I I feel I questioned if I still uh, I still want not to continue working in SGV. So may mga ganyan din akong moments. No? And then I told myself, if I will be resigning, um, I want to become an internal auditor. So since SGV is uh, sponsoring, no? sponsoring such certifications and even the reviews, so sabi ko, before I leave, I would like to take another certification. That's why I took the CIA exam. Okay, with the with the intention of leaving SGV later on and and uh, joining internal audit department, but for some reason again, I was convinced not to stay in SGV. No, in SGV, so I continued my journey. I was promoted to senior and then manager, and then later on another door opened. Then, uh, I also ventured into the sustainability space. So this is maybe you're not familiar with CSRS, but this uh, certification or space focuses on helping clients to become a sustainable organization. So I'm, I'm sure you have heard at some point yung mga UN, Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. So we're also helping clients to create their sustainability report. Okay. And then later, just last year, no, just last year, no, um, when I um a senior manager already, no, I took a one year program. Then I had this passion in coaching, no, even no, even when I was still in JP, and I really am really happy working with people, coaching my teams. So I I took the program and then later on become certified in master performance coaching. So I become a certified master performance coach. And just last year, no, uh, October 1, 2020, I finally uh, achieved no, one of my dreams no, in my career to become a partner. So I was admitted to the partnership no, last October 1, 2020. And I, 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 I consider now myself as a full-fledged transformative leader. Okay? So as you can see, no, this is my journey in terms of certification. At, at, at initial glance, you might see that these are not related, no. but I will explain to you how these five certifications are related. Now, of course, I'm a BSA student, so my certification, I want to become an accountant, so my first certification was CPA. And then since I want to become, I was convinced not to become an IT auditor, the, the first logical certification that I, will, I should take is CISA, okay? And then in CIA, although it's really not a plan, not, I, I don't plan to stay in SGV, it's still relevant because in the nature of my work today, I deal a lot with internal auditors. I also had some internal audit engagement with my clients and CIA allowed me to look things, the organization on a wider perspective because CISA is a bit more uh, focused or specialized in terms of IT. So whenever I'm doing process reviews, I'm, I'm reviewing organizations, I can really use you know, this first three certifications because as a CPA, I'm a business, a, a graduate of a business course and a certified a business professional. So I understand business. And a lot of my clients are uh, already using IT in their business. So I can definitely use my CISA knowledge and then later on, yung CIA, 
because when you're an internal auditor, you need to look at no the entire organization, no all departments, HR, finance, uh, marketing, and legal, no all are all all areas of the organization. And then for the CSRS, no traditionally, no for example, if you're an investor, you're a uh, uh, lender, you always look the financial statements of organization, right? No, whether it's profitable or not. But right now, it's no longer important that the organization is profitable. But the question is, until when? So you need to look at the other areas of the business, like the environmental factors as well as the social factors on, uh, on top of the economic factors to make the organization sustainable. Because sustainability is not only about environment. So now when I go to my client, I also look at them from the sustainability standpoint while I'm doing, uh, reviewing their business processes, checking their IT, no, and then checking their entire organization. And then lastly, since I'm a part of a team, no, in, in when, you, when you are in a professional services firm like SGV, you always work as a team. So coaching is very important. So this is how these five certifications interplay with one another. No? So, so my, the key message here is you need to, to know what career or what are, are the relevant um, knowledge, what are the relevant um, certifications aligned to what you want to become to progress in your career. And those are the certifications that you need to choose. Okay. But okay, that's, uh, that's uh, I think I have shared with you more than enough of my experience on this, but let us focus now our attention on CISA. Okay. So CISA stands for Certified Information Systems Auditor. No? Hindi lang maganda yung, 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 ano niya, yung acronym CISA, parang baliw, di ba? Baliw. But CISA, no, it's a, a globally, accepted, uh, globally accepted certification offered by ISACA. So before going deeper into ISACA, I, I mean to CISA, I would like to introduce first ISACA. So ISACA is uh, one of uh, a, a very old organization established more than 50 years ago, of course, in the U.S., but the focus of this group of IT individuals is IT auditing. As you can see here, auditing controls in computerized system. So that was the intention. That's why they named themselves as Information Systems Audit and Controls Association. Okay? But because of the changing demand, because of the, the transformation also of the business landscape, IT landscape, they decided to drop not. The, the long name, I, the Information Systems Audit and Controls. And then they just retain the word ISACA. Okay, so they no longer use the long one. No, their official name now is just ISACA. So this is similar to like ano, PLDT, the, the previous name of PLDT is Philippine Long Distance Telecoms Company. But PLDT is no longer just a mere telephone company. No, PLDT became a tech company. That's why they also dropped the long one. And their official name now is PLDT Inc. Because they have, um, but they, they got, they've gone beyond uh, the business of providing landlines. They're actually in the business of um, data, information, and technology business. Okay? So ISACA, it has two more than two, or 200 chapters. So similar with NFJP, you know, they also call their, their parang member or member organization normally at country level as chapters. And then, and then they're in more than around 80 countries nationwide. And of course, in the Philippines, so we have one chapter, which is ISACA Manila chapter, and which is a, a, a bit similar to NFJP Region 4. So parang sort of, we also have ACADs and non-ACAD events, but majority of the events of ISACA are for professional development. Okay, so for example, this coming May, so we have uh, a webinar, a free webinar no, about security transformation, and it's a lunch and learn, a lunch and learn series, and all all those uh, members who will be attending this will earn two CPE credits. No, so CPE is very important for us professionals first for our certification. So similar with CPA, international certifications have CPE credits. And then second, for our professional growth and development. Okay, so we have a lot a lot of webinars. Um, some are for free, no? And also some are for, pro, for, for a fee. So you have to pay, no? And 
uh, the normally for CPE credits, the range of of the fees are around 500 to 1,000 peso per CPE. So that's the normal range. So for example, if this particular webinar is for a fee since two CPE credits, so it might cost 500 to 1,000. So if you will be attending, let's say, a half-day webinar, so four, so four hours, so normally four CPE credits, so it will range around 2,000 to 4,000 pesos. So that is uh, how expensive to maintain and to get CPEs. So unless, of course, you are, uh, you joined a company, for example, like SGV, who supports this, no, and who pays for this, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, but just imagine if if your company is not supporting this continuing professional organization. Let's say you need twenty CPD credits for a year, so you need to spend around ten to twenty thousand for to just to earn twenty CPE credits for a year. Okay. All right, so of course, aside from webinars and conventions, symposiums, we also have sort of non-academic events. So for example, we also have Isaka Got Talent. We also have um, sports fest, no? like uh, badminton, bowling, no? but we don't have pageants no? like JP. Yeah? But we have a lot of, uh, let's say every quarter, we have a membership night, no? and it's for free. And normally the membership night is being conducted in a hotel. Now, prior to the pandemic, the last uh, Isaka quarterly event or membership night that I have attended, it was conducted in Okada, Manila. No, and it's for free. No, so overflowing food and drinks, and there's a speaker. So there's also a CPD credit, and then the officers are reporting. There's a president's report, treasurer's report, and then the lineup of activities, and then there are a lot of games and raffle prizes. So last time the raffle, the grand prize was a uh, Palaking TV, no L L LCD TV, and also expensive traveling bags. So, so it, alam mo yon, sulit talaga yung membership, no, in Isaka. Because more than those perks, no, it was also it also allows you to gain professional networks. Okay, and in Isaka, majority of the members are coming from professional services firm like SGV, PwC, Deloitte, no, PNA, KPMG, RTC. So nanjajan sila all more than. And then uh, all, there are also a lot of members coming from the private industry, mga IT professionals, mga IT practitioner, mga chief information officer, chief information security officer, or mga IT practitioners. Okay? So I hope that you will also join now ISACA later on. And aside from that, no, if you become a member of ISACA, you will have access to these uh, materials. So you have uh, free uh, audit programs for members. So, for example, if you're doing a, an IT audit, whether you're an external auditor or internal auditor, you can download audit programs and white papers from ISACA website. You can also have access to COBIT. No? This is uh, the most globally accepted framework in IT. No? And there's also a journal. No? There's also, uh, this is a bi-monthly issue, no? mga recent trends about IT. There's also CISA materials. Some of them are for free. Some of them are for a fee. You, know, you, you can buy these books. You no, know, Before, it's a hard copy, but right now, all of them are also available in online, plat or online format. Soft copy, I mean. Okay? Okay. So also, aside from those uh, materials, you know, ISACA, it also has blogs. You no, know, High tech. Na din we have blogs. We also have webcasts. We have mga industry news and Isaka journal. So you can go to the website and then the artic there are short articles, let's say five minute read. This will allow you to keep up to be updated on the recent trends on, on IT. Okay, so you can use this as a talking point when you're talking to your clients, talking to C suites. No, it's also good from time to time that you visit the website to gain knowledge. No la name mga recent events. Like for example, what happened to solar winds. Yung mga hacking na nangyayari, no? Uh, before, few, a few years ago, oh, there also a uh, big uh, issue regarding yung sa BPI, no? Yung about nung nagkaroon ng error in their system. So you can also learn that, no? In Isaka, we talk about those topics so that when when you uh, you come across with, let's say, a C-suite, no? Ask you about this. What are your thoughts about this? What happened? No, you can really share your insight because you have um, read no topics about this. And there's also infographics. No, there's an available info infographic. Last, just last month, April, 
that will help you not to identify which is the right ISACA certification for you. Okay? Then, next, no? So, if you're now convinced to become a member, there are three types of membership, no? You could become a member. No, this is a new one. No? Student members are now allowed. And then, there's another one, recent graduate membership. And, of course, the professional membership. Okay? So, for student membership, these are the fields of study that can become a member of ISACA. So, as you can see, uh, there are business courses, including our course, accountancy or accounting-related courses. And there's also IT courses. And then there's also computer science and engineering courses. So, if you're enrolled in any of these fields of studies, no, you can actually join ISACA as a student member. Then, so what do you need to do is to submit is just fill out the membership form, application form, and just, just send any of this, any proof that you're a student. For example, copy of your class schedule, certified copy of your class schedule, transcript of record, or a letter, official letter coming from the university. So this is just a very simple process. So the next question is how much? No? So uh, this one. So, medyo pricey lang siya ng konti, no? For a student, no? Pero mura pa din, no? It's $25. So, it's around 1,200 pesos. And then, plus the local membership fee. So, last time I checked, the local membership fee is around $20. I'm not sure if there's a discount ra discounted rate for students. But 20, 20 US dollars is around 1,000 pesos. So, 25 plus $20. So, that's $45 around 2,000 pesos, no? So, that's the cost of uh, joining ISACA as a student. No? So, major price is at your level, but the benefit that you can get no, is really massive. Okay. Next. So, there's, there's also a recent graduate membership. So, these are the uh, college graduates. No? We did, uh, they graduated now within two years. Pa. So, just, they just recently graduated. So, they are given preferential discounts as well. So you just need to sub, of course, fill out the form and then submit any of this, a copy or a proof that you're a recent graduate, so copy of your diploma, an official transcript of records, or letter from registrar no, that is specifying that you graduate within the last two years. Okay? So meaning you're just a new professional. So the cost is a bit higher, around $68, so around 3,000 pesos, plus another 1,000 for the membership due so that's a total of $88, so around 4,200 pesos. So a bit, almost double of the student membership. And then lastly, so this is the, so this is the cost no, of a professional member. Okay. So the new member, so meron lang siyang $30. No? This is a one-time fee for new members. Okay. And then may, may juice na $135, so around 6,500. And then, ito pala, may, yung 30 is by mail, pero pag may discount siya, no? okay, uh, discount na $10. Okay? So, uh, there's a total of 145 or around 6,000, uh, around 7,000 pesos. Okay? So, almost 8,000. So, again, almost double of the recent membership uh, due. Okay? So, pataas siya na pataas. Pag student, around 2,000. Kapag recent graduate, around 4,000. And then, kapag... A uh, professional member is around 7,500 to 8,000. Okay? So it might be a bit pricey, but again, for me, sulit yan. Because if you become a member, what will be your benefits? Number one, you will have access to a lot of things. Okay? Access to global conferences. Conferences, you will have, uh, you will receive invites, you will receive uh, notifications about available conferences that you can join. Again, some of them are free, some of them are for a fee. And then next, uh, we also have uh, access to job fairs, career center online. No, then career uh, online career fair. So if you're looking for a job, whether locally or globally, so you can also have access to ISACA website. Okay, to know the job postings. Not to if you, let's say, let's say you have a plan to go abroad and migrate and look for a job related to your uh, career. And then you also have. Um, access to all the chapters offerings and then thought leadership and then and a lot more no so dito pa lang no? sulit na sulit na yung, yung yung membership fee another one this is for me this is the the ano, thing gusto ko savings a, a huge discount 
Okay? May mga some uh, partnership. Oh, Isaka has partnership in some companies that will give you discount like hotels and technology. And then, I want you to focus on the second one. If you're a member, you can get 25% discount no? uh, for taking Isaka certifications like CISA. So later, I will share with you the cost. And then discounts on conferences, as I mentioned, no, medyo pricey ang mga conferences. So kung one day conference yan, eight hours, eight CPD credits, so it will cost you around that much, no, 6,000 to 8,000 peso. Then uh, there's a lot of free webinars available for members. So you, you can gain um, CPE, CPE credits no, without paying, lalo na ngayon online. So like kanina, yung, yung, what I've shown this May 7, there's a free webinar for two CPE credits for members. And then discounts for ISACA publication. Though if you want to buy some of the public, like the CISA review material is for a fee, you can get also huge discounts. And for members, you can have 72 hours plus of free CPE. Because simply attending to event, like for example, the quarterly membership event, there's a CPE credit there because there are speakers, no, there are one or two speakers who will talk about it and it's allowed. No? Even if you are uh, joining uh, committees of ISACA, there's a corresponding CPE credit for that as well. And that is for free. Okay, So also uh, membership program, discounts, and many more. And also some of the audit programs are only free for ISACA members. And then lastly, also very important, you have um, access to knowledge database of ISACA. Okay, you can get the ISACA journal uh, every two months. You have webinars, white papers, and then newsletters, a lot of products, case studies. Now, this will allow you to progress in your career. No? So you can really download a lot of materials. It's a huge knowledge database in ISACA. Okay? So it may look uh, expensive, no? but the benefits, as long as you're, you know the benefits of being an ISACA member, no? it's really worth it. Okay? All right. So now, what are the certifications and certificates offered by ISACA? So currently, these are the certifications and certificates available for ISACA. So we will not be discussing them in detail. But I will focus on CISA. Okay? So CISA no, is, again, a, a, a globally accepted certification no, and a set of standards for individuals who uh, performs uh, IT audit, controls, and monitoring in assessing a, a business information technology and business systems. It may sound technical and a lot of people think, ah, these are for IT, um, IT lang, mga hardcore IT. No? But actually, it's not, no? Even business professionals like accountants can, can take this because this is very much relevant to our profession, especially if you're in the IT audit space. Okay, So, so this uh, certification is good no, for IT auditors, whether you're an external auditor like me. I'm also doing external audit, but my focus is on IT audit. So even if you're an internal auditor or a risk compliance officer of a company no, doing IS audit or could be on the controllership side and then focusing on IT, IT um, space. Then also if you're a CIO, nasa, nasa C-suite level ka na governance, like you're the chief technology officer, chief information officer, chief information security officer, or you're in the you're in the your role is a let's say business analyst or the one involved in project management of implementing systems. No, if you're also in the information security space. So these are just the examples of professions wherein CISA is a really good certification aligned to your career. Okay? Then CISA, no, this is uh, based on ISACA's uh, study that 90% no, of the team with, wherein there's a CISA in the team is more effective. No? Because that person, if you're a CISA, it means that you know the standards, you know uh, you have a lot of uh, materials that you can learn so that you can apply this to your work no as an IT auditor as a information security officer okay and of course there's a 70% increase improved uh, efficiency and expertise in this area and also based on the study no it makes the employee feel good so it it, it also results in employee retention because they feel no, especially if the company is sponsoring such certifications and the review and the webinars as well so the employee feels good and feels valued no, because they're 
career progression and their uh, professional growth is being taken care of a company. And then currently, uh, the, es the estimate is there's around 151,000 no, CISA uh, prof professionals globally. And also according to ISACA, no, this again US, the average salary of CISA holder is 110,000 US dollars. This is annual. No, again, this is in the US. I don't have the information in the local settings. So 110,000, this is around mga 5 million a year. So around four, more than 400,000 pesos per month. But then again, this is a U.S. rate. Huh? So also, 22% uh, potential pay boost. Some companies are giving premium no, for CISA certificate holders. And then 70% on the job performance improvement. Okay? And aside from this, no, if you're in the IT audit space, no, it's a best credential and qualification on your niche. Even if, for example, you're applying for a job, no, if the employer will see that you're a CISA holder, no, that will... Uh, trigger interest. No, it means that you are you are uh, knowledgeable on this IT audit space. No, plus if you're an international uh, holder of international certification like ISA, uh, like CISA, it means that you have an exper actual experience in delivering the job. Okay, so this is very important, and even for us, no, um, uh, in SGV, no, we also highlight this in our bidding proposals to our clients that our people are certified like CISA, CIA. No, it gives us credentials no, that we can actually do the, the job for you. Okay? That's, that's right now, no, because of the pandemic, there's really a high demand for IT auditors because in the past, traditionally, no, the, the businesses, the business models, they are in the office or they are in the branches or stores. But right now, because of the pandemic, like in, in NCR Plus, to naka MECQ pa tayo, a lot of businesses are forced to change their business model and do it online. Okay? And when you bring your business online, there's a new set of risks no, that will emerge no, that are not traditionally existing. No, let's say before, um, if you want to, let's say, uh, prepare purchase orders or it's a manual document. If you want to uh, process payment, no, you need to prepare a, a check voucher and then manually sign it. But right now, because of the limited um, movement, no, walang pasok, no, the, the, the transactions are being approved online already. No, and when you say you, when you do it online, of course, there's a risk, no risk of hacking. There's a new, uh, vul a lot of vulnerabilities in the IT space. No, so that's why there's really a need for IT auditors to help companies to secure their businesses and protect their assets. Okay, so right now, in demand talaga yung mga IT, IT auditors. And even after the pandemic, I think this will be the this will be the new normal. No, I don't think we will uh, immediately return to a normal five-day work a week. No, a lot of organizations uh, have already declared that they will be a full-time na remote working or a hybrid. No, so unlike before, no, if you want to protect your your, your IT organization, you can sec easily secure it because it's within the perimeters of your office. No, right? You can put firewall. No, you have physical controls, but right now the employees are working at the comfort of their home. No, they're connecting through their um, home Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi. No, there's a lot of risk. No, and as IT um, auditors, no, we need to highlight what are the risks. No, on on uh, allowing our people to connect. No, meron pa kayong VPN or virtual private network to make sure that your connection connection is secured. No, your email facility is it secured? No, because you're um uh, uh sharing confidential information about your business, financials, customer information, employee information. That's why it's really important, no, to have IT professionals. No, that's why it's really an in demand, no, in demand, uh, profession right now. No, and again, if you're in the in this space, in that you're the IT audit space, a risk, a IT risk space. Information security space, CISA is a very good certification for you. Okay, so now, so in CPA board exam, we have six subjects, right? But in CISA, we only have five, what we call domains. So CISA exam is uh, 150 questions, not only, so shorter than the CPA board exam, and it's divided into five. So this is the way, uh, the distribution of questions. 
So around 21% are focused on IS audit. So this is very much similar to your auditing theory for those who are in the higher years. No? But the focus, of course, is on IT. No? How do you audit? So ito yung audit prac, parang auditing portion no, of um, CISA. Of course, when I took the exam, ito yung highest ko because I'm very much familiar with auditing theory. And then the second area is about governance and management of IT. So 16% are around 24 questions because this is, these are the topics related to how you structure IT and how you govern IT. No, hindi naman yan, mag ka lang and then it's tatakbo na yan mag-isa. No, it's not like that. No, somebody has to govern it. No, sino ba yung nasa tuktok of the organization? How does IT organization reports to the board? No, because a lot of IT uh, matters no are board level matters. Okay? And then how do you manage this um third party? Let's say you're in the outsourcing uso na din yan ngayon, no? Instead of you creating your own let's say IT team no, you can out, actually outsource this to third party. So how do you manage that? No, these are the topics. No, you need to properly govern your IT. You, you have to maintain your IT organization. No, even people management. No, it's uh, it's also very important. So that will be the focus area of governance and management of IT. Now, the third one, no, the eighteen percent. This is about um acquisition and development of system. No. Of course, in a business, no, there's a, what we call system development life cycle. No? Of course, you will um, either purchase your system. Let's say, bibili ka ng bago mong accounting system, no? a bago mong financial reporting system like QuickBooks, for example, for smaller companies or for huge companies, you can use Oracle or SAP. No? And it's not as easy as you just purchase it and then you plug. It's not a plug and play system. Okay? Even if you will be creating your own system, you will hire your own programmers. There is a process in place that you need to follow you know, for, and to make sure that the implementation project will be successful. Okay? So because there are a lot of risks. You know, one, the top, uh, for me, the top three risks you know, of implementing a system is number one, will the system meet the business requirements? For example, you're implementing an accounting system. Okay? Tama ba yung behavior in the system, pag ganito yung entry, yung debit, yung credit, yung taxes, yung VAT, no? tama ba yung pinapasukan na journal entry? No? So this process, no? there's a process in place to make sure that your investment no, will be, uh, you can get the value of your investment because normally, IT projects are expensive projects. No? It will cost you millions and you, you want to make sure that what you have invested, you will get the value. Unfortunately, I've seen clients who spent a lot of money you know, in implementing a system and then later on, they're still hybrid, manual, na automatic. You no, know? There are areas that should be automatic, that it should be uh, taken care of by the system, but because it's not properly implemented, well, hindi nila sinunod yung proper place, no, mas lalong humirap yung process. I have a client before, you know, when, they, when they automated their process, it resulted them to hiring more people to do the reconciliation of the balances. Sabi ko, I think it doesn't make sense. No, parang you, you implemented a system para pahirapan yung buhay mo. So instead of making your life easy, instead, no, it created a nightmare of reconciling. So it means that there's a problem when you implemented that system. Okay, so that's why you need, as an IT professional, we need to know what is the right process for us to manage this to make sure Sure that the business requirements no, will be met when you implement a system. Second risk of implementing a system, no, timeline. No, if, you, if you plan to implement this system in six months, no, it should be finished within six months. And then unfortunately, no, I have clients in the past, six months was the initial um, plan to implement a system. Three years na hindi pa sila tapos. Imagine the, no, this company is bleeding money. No? So, Una, hindi na nila nagagamit yung bagong system. No? Hirap na hirap na sila. And yet, they're continuously spending money. No? And you don't want to be in that situation. And then lastly, no? of course, if you extend the project, you will also extend, uh, expect an excess no? or over um, yung cost. No? It will go beyond your budget. For example, your budget is only one. For example, lang, 2 million pesos for a six-month project. Just imagine how much millions you will be spending if the project dragged you know, from six months to three years. Of course, you will be paying consultant, you will be paying your people, you will be 
paying a lot. No, he will be paying a lot. No, so this area, no, this area are the focus areas of this third domain, the information systems acquisition and development. And then the fourth one, so this is the the more the more technical area. No, so in information system operations and business resilience. No, ang pinag-usapan dito is how you op the, the, the how you operate IT. So you also learn this the different layers of IT, the different technical terms. No, because as an IT professional, no, you need to know the language no of IT. No, for example, I, I have a client, a telco client. No, I was talking to different engineers and IT. We're talking about network elements. We're talking about switches. No, and I'm doing that as 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 an external auditor, huh? So maybe you're wondering why do we need to know that? No, because in a telco company, if you're doing an audit of the revenue process, the capture, no, the capture of the revenue starts with the switch. No, kina capture niya yung mga calls, whether local, um, international, and even yung mga data, um, data usage, no, SMS, text messages is being captured by the switch. No, once captured by the switch, it will create what we call call data record. No, call data record contains the information of the a number meaning the person who called and the B number the person na tinawagan the start and end of the conversation the duration the date and timestamp and based on this call data record no it will go through the bill, uh, billing system the rating system para ma-rate magkano ba yung call naka-promo ka ba naka-unly ka ba until it goes to the billing system until it goes to the GL or financial system so we really need to understand the end to end process so if we don't know the technical terms no so it will be very difficult for us to to perform our job okay so that's the area number 4 and business resilience so yun na sa inyo yung nakaranas na nagcrash yung laptop diba can i see in the fb live meron na bang nagcrash yung laptop sa inyo anong feeling no so sayang yung ano yung mga materials mo the pictures the movies no just imagine if that will happen to a company no for example binaha sila or dilindol nagkaroon ng disaster okay so they should have a backup data just nakaka stress thank you crystal nakaka stress right so just imagine if company will lose its data customer data financial data employee data no that's why it's also important no there's a, uh, what we call business resiliency. How can we make sure that if something happens to our system, main system, we can still resume the work? So we still have backup data that we can use, that we can restore for us to continue our business. So those are the topics being uh, discussed in domain four. And then lastly, the biggest part of the exam is about security. So dito yung mga topic about password, uh, about viruses, about encryption, no? So anything about protecting an asset, about access controls, di ba? So right now, no, kailangan nating malaman ano ba yung mga different malwares, mga mga sistema ng hackers, no? Tingnan niyo yung mga classmates niyo sino diyan yung mga mukhang hacker because we need to protect our organization from this. No, unlike before, no, if you want to rob a bank, kailangan mong maghukay papunta sa vault ng bank. But right now, if you want to rob a bank, you can do it at the comfort of your home. No, you just need to make sure na marunong kang maghack, then you can no, that you can steal a lot of billions of pesos in the bank. So, as an IT professional, IT auditor, we need to help the companies, no, in protecting these assets. And those are the topics being discussed in domain 5. Okay? So it may sound technical for you, but at the end of the day, look at no, look at the business sense. All of this, no, goes back to the business objective. No, because IT is not a separate entity, or it should not work in silo in organization. Remember, IT is an enabler or a competitive advantage in business. No, if you don't take advantage of this, no, others, other companies will do. And once you venture, so it doesn't mean that there's a lot of risk in IT. No, we will, we will no longer use it. No, instead, no, there are a lot of ways for us to secure our systems. No, internal systems, external systems. You nakatapat sa sa internet website. There's a lot of mechanism. We just need to know how. No, so that we could give value to our organization. Okay. So CISA exam again. It's an online exam. Hundred fifty multiple choice questions. So you also already have twenty five percent chance of getting the right answer. So mamimili ka lang. 
And then the exam is for four hours. But according to one of my seniors who recently took the exam, she was able to finish it in two hours. No? And she just used the remaining half to review her answers. So, mabilis lang. No? Wala naman tong computation like CPA board exam. No? So, uh, these are um, theory questions. And then the scoring system is a score of 200 to 800. I also don't know how, but ganun yung scoring system niya. 200 to 800. So, so meaning each domain, you will get a score of from the 200 to 800 range. But for you to pass the exam, you need to earn a score of 450 or higher at an average. So there's no requirement that each subject or each domain, you need to have 450. I, I asked again yung senior code who, who recently took the exam. Sabi niya, meron daw siyang score na a little bit lang naman below 450 in one of the subjects, but the overall is still above 450. So she passed the exam. Okay, so, so again, as long as the overall average score is 450 or higher, you will pass the CISA exam. And then the good thing about this, you have options. No, You can either take the exam through a testing center or at home. But at this point, no, because of the pandemic, especially in uh, NCR+, Plus, naka GCQ, I, ECQ, MECQ, a lot of testing centers are closed at this point. So our only option now is to take it at home. So if you're joining different quizbees in JPI, yeah, yung mga nagpapa room tour, house tour, and checking, may camera looking at you, that is how actually the online CISA exam is being conducted. But this time, no, it's one-on-one, -on -one, meaning that you have a proctor no, observing you while you're taking the exam. And before you take the exam, you need to show yung surroundings mo. You need to show yung top ng table, under your table, yung background. Baka may mga nakadikit dyan na mga kodigo, no? Because it's a very uh, highly secured exam. And when you're taking the exam, no, you cannot switch windows. No, The system used by ISACA can detect if you're switching windows kung nag, nag -cheat ka. No, So I, I suggest don't do that. No, So it, will cost, it might cost your certification. So it's a very highly secured setup. No, And make sure, of course, that you have a very reliable internet. Okay? So because it's a four, the red direct of four hours exam. Okay? Tapos, it's very convenient. You can easily, as after you register online, of course, pay the fees. You can actually schedule your exam online. And you can take the exam, no? 40, 40, you can schedule the an exam 48 hours from the time of registration. For example, today it's Sunday. I can actually immediately schedule my exam, let's say, on Tuesday or Wednesday. So, ganun, ganun siya ka-convenient. And ang maganda pa dito, you, the exam is available from Monday to Sunday, no? seven days a week. And regardless if you're a morning person, afternoon person, night person, or kung hindi ka natutulog, you can take the exam from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. For if you're a morning person, 2 p.m. to 6 if you're an afternoon person. Kung night person ka, no? 7 to 11. For, for some reason, kung gusto mo mag-take ng 12 a.m. to 4 a.m., pwede. And the reason for this is this is a global exam. So, just to cater different time zones, so you can actually select any of this. Okay? Now, um, tapos, uh, once you, after you submit your answers online, you will immediately know if you pass or fail. No? Nakakatakot, no? So, so magdasal ka muna. Before you submit your exam, within the four-hour window, no, pray na sana ang lumabas, you pass the exam. But wala pang score, no? The official score will be sent to you through email with the scores no, per domain and the, the average score two weeks after the exam. Okay? So very convenient pa. Can I see your uh, chat box? Your response chat? Very convenient pa. No, sana sa CPA board din pwede itong gamitin. No? So we don't know yet. Nakaka-frustrate. I know a lot of students, are, our graduates are frustrated because of uh, the cancellation of the board exam. Though they're very ready and yet it keeps on postponing, but because our public health no, and safety is our priority. So next, what are the re exam requirements? Now, first, you need to register online. And once you're registered, you only have 12 months to take the exam. Otherwise, your registration and your payment will be forfeited. No, Unfortunately, regardless if you have a valid reason or not, there's no extension. No, if you fail to take the exam within 12 months from the time of registration, you can no longer take the exam, meaning you need to register again and pay again. Okay? All right. Okay? Tapos, 
Um, kaya dati I remember no before parang nung time po kasi medyo manual pa eh. But yung, yung, yung iba ayaw nila mag-register because they're not yet ready. But if you will not register, you will not be forced to be ready. No? So I suggest na alam mo yun, you really find time, put a schedule. No? Mag-aral ka and then set a schedule when you when you will be taking the exam instead of delaying and delaying it. Okay? So the next question, how much would it cost? So this is a bit pricey. No? So if you're a non-member, the, the fee is 760 US dollars or around 36,000 pesos for non-members. Again, that's why I really encourage you to become a member of ISACA, no? Because you will get a 25% discount so nasa 575 US dollars na lang or around 27,500 pesos. So you will be saving around 8,000 pesos, which is the cost of the membership. Diba? If you become a professional member, it's around 8,000 pesos. And that is exactly the discount that you will be getting no? if you take register for ASISA exam. So meaning dito pa lang, bawi mo na yung membership fee na discountan ka na plus all the other benefits. Okay? All right. So uh, unlike the CPA board exam, no, there are other requirements no, be before you can become CISA certified. Because in CPA board, after you pass the exam, you're, a, you're already a CPA. Okay? But in CISA, no, there are five requirements. Number one, of course, you need to pass the exam. That's the first requirement. The second uh, requirement is you need to adhere to the Code of Professional Ethics. So you have to read it. And then this is a, a very simple requirement. This is just a one-pager declaration confirming that you have read the Code of Professional Ethics and you are compliant. So it's a self-declaration. So number three, uh, adherence to CPE policy. So again, this is just a declaration that you have read the CPE policy, that you are aware that when you become a CISA, you need to strictly follow the CPE policy, which I will be discussing later on. So again, it's a one-pager declaration. You don't need to submit any CPED credits at this point in time. Next is compliance with information systems auditing standard. Again, this is another declaration. No, you're confirming and declaring that you have read the standards and you are um, confirming that you will follow it. And then lastly, this is ito yung mahirap, no? medyo challenging emit, is the minimum work experience requirement. Among these five, no, the two, three, and four are uh, very easy to comply with. No, the, the difficult com uh, requirements are number one and number five. So I know uh, it's also very controversial right now, the proposed amendment on the uh, accountancy law, right? That there's a proposal to have at least two-year working experience before taking the CPA board. So this is similar to the architecture board exam in the Philippines. No, I believe na, and I'm, I'm not sure. Huh? I think the, uh, one of the references of BOA on this are the international certifications like CISA. Because ever since, no, patagal na to that um, CISA certification, it's not only a requirement enough that you have passed the exam, meaning you have theoretical knowledge, but once you are CISA certified, no, you're a, you're a CISA, I mean, it also means that you have the minimum work experience, meaning you have actually uh, perform no work. No, parang ano, parang OJT. No, I think some schools ganun, no, when they're graduates or they're um they have the knowledge plus they have OJT. Parang they have also work experience. So similar with CISA, no, once you're a CISA uh, holder, meaning you have the minimum experience and you have passed no the standard uh ex exam for that. Okay. So I know it's a controversial topic for CPA for the CPA. No, I let's see how it will pan out. Okay, the next question would be how, how many years of experience before ka magiging CISA certified? Okay, so you need to have at least five years, ang haba, di ba? Five-year work experience. Okay, this is the requirement. So after you, you take the exam and submit itong two, three, and four, you need to have at least five-year work experience. Okay, and this work experience should be within 10 years from the time that you are applying for the certification. So, pag yung experience mo is beyond 10 years, it cannot be counted. For example, nag-IT nag auditor ka ng 5 years. And then later on, nag-change ka ng career. Let's say, nag-artista ka ng 10 years. Sumikat ka for 10 years only. And then after 10 years, wala ka na, laos ka na, bumalik ka in pag sa pagiging IT auditor. So, nag-spend ka na naman ng 2 years. So, if you, done, if you take the CISA exam during that time, no, 
you can no longer use yung five-year experience mo before ka naging artista because that's already beyond 10 years. Because uh, Isaka, they want your experience to be recent. Actually, 10 years, mahaba na nga eh. No? But they want it to be a recent experience. Yung five-year mo na work experience. Okay? Okay? Tapos, you have at least five years no, to apply for certification no, from the date of your exam. So, ibig sabihin, if I take the exam today and I pass, for example, I need to apply no, within five years. Otherwise, my exam and my registration, my payment will be forfeited. I need to take the exam again. So, ibig sabihin, even uh, at the time of the exam, it's not necessary that you already have the five-year experience. Okay? So, for example, when I take the exam, when I, when I take the exam, but today, two years na ako nag-work. For example, two years na. So, I need three more years. So, if matatapos ko yung three more years, so, nasa within five years pa rin ako from my date of exam, so, pasok pa din yun. I can still uh, apply for certification. Okay? But don't worry, don't worry. Yung five years, don't be discouraged because there are actually substitution and waivers. Okay, so first one, if you're a general practitioner of information systems or any non-IS auditing experience, no, iba yung ginagawa mo, no, that could be substituted for a maximum of one year. Halimbawa, two years akong general, kahit, let's say three years na akong general information systems practitioner pwede ko siyang i-substitute. I can apply for substitution. So, matitik off na yung one year dun sa five-year experience. So, kailangan ko na ng four years. Okay? But the second one is the best. No? For, this is for me the best. No? You can substitute your college degree. No? Either a two-year course or four-year course. This is actually what I used no? when I took the CISA. Since I'm a college degree holder, so ipag four-year degree, you can substitute that by two years. No, kapag vocational course, for example, two-year course, no, you can substitute it by one year. At sabi dito, 60 to 120 hours of university. Walang binanggit kung anong course. So when I took the exam no, in CISA, so I'm a four-year degree holder, so I have two years already. And then I took the exam ng two and a half years in SGV, two years and six months. So since five years yung kailangan, meron na akong substitute for two years, di ba? Because I'm a college degree holder, kailangan ko na lang ng three years work experience. So since two and a half na ako, tapos during my time, manual pa, so three months bago lumabas yung result ng exam, so naglapse na yung three months. So when I receive the result of the exam, my work experience is already two years and nine months. So I just need to wait for another three months before I can apply for certification. So, nung naka-3 years na ako sa SGV, plus I applied for the 2-year substitution rule for the college degree, I was able to meet the 5-year minimum requirement. Okay? But needless to say, since a college degree is a substitution, it means that college degree, uh, a college degree is not a requirement for you to apply for CISA. Unlike other certifications like CIA, kailangan ka bachelor's degree holder. In CISA, it's not a requirement. No, for example, for some reason, hindi ka naka-graduate, no, hindi ka naka-finish ng semester. Let's say, wala ka talaga natapos ng college. But for some reason, you landed on a job. So you can still apply for a CISA. Yun nga lang, you need to take five years work experience. And then lastly, no, if you're also a master's degree holder, but not just any master's, only in the space of information security or IT, you can substitute that for one year. So in total to, one year plus two years plus one year. So four years yung pwede mo masubstitute. However, there's a rule that you can only substitute for three. So you need to work at least for two. But there's more. Meron another, ano, another rule. If you're a professor no, in the space of computer science, accounting, auditing, every two years of full-time, ah, dapat full-time university instructor role could be substituted again for one year. Okay? So just imagine, no, very easy. No, very easy yung experience. Mukha lang siyang mahirap, but it's very easy. Okay? So this CISA designation is, will not be awarded until all of these are met. Okay? So next, once you're a CISA, so how would you maintain it? How can you maintain it? Okay? So you need to have CPD credit. So 20 hours yung kailangan per year. 
but for three year cycle you need 120 i think this is also where yung cpd law natin was based no before so for example year 1 naka 20 ka no pasok no year 2 20 ka but on year 3 since you need 120 cpd credits you need to have 80 cpd credits for year 3 so in my case what i'm doing so i'm i'm maintaining 40 hours per year para hindi siya mahirap on the year 3 but then again no if you're not uh, your company is not supporting this no just imagine you will spend around 100,000 no for this that's why it's very important that you choose your company wisely and then join Isaka for a lot of free CPD hours. Then, of course, may bayad din yan. Every year, you have to pay um, $45, uh, $45 or around 2,000 pesos no, for members and $85 around 4,000 no, 4, pesos for non-members. Again, you have to confirm again, declare that you're compliant with the Code of Professional Ethics and Isaka and Standards. Again, if you fail this, no, you will be uh, your your license, your certification, CISA certification will be revoked. Okay. So lastly, no, there's a what we call non-practicing status, no. Just in case, no, you have let's say short term or unemployment, you have a disability, nagkaroon ka ng accident or whatever, or you want to change career but may possibility of returning, no, in uh, IS audit space in the future pwede kang mag-apply for a non-practicing status. Anong effect? Anong effect pag non-practicing status? Number one, uh, although um, even you're non-practicing, you still have to pay. Siyempre may bayad yan. Nothing is for, there's no such thing as free lunch. So you still have to pay, but you don't need to report or earn CPD credits during the time that you're non-practicing. Okay? Kasi di ba sabi ko dun sa previous slide, if you fail to meet the CPD requirements, your license will be revoked. But if you apply for a non-practicing status, even if you don't meet the CPD credits, your license will not be revoked. Okay? Then the effective date of your non-practicing status is magre-retroactive siya from the January 1 on the year that you failed to uh, submit the minimum CPD credit. For example, ngayon, nag-submit na ako ng non-practicing status this year. Okay? However, nakapag-training naman ako ng January to April. And then I still submitted my CPD requirements, let's say 20, 20 units this year. So compliant pa rin ako this year. So the following year, kung hindi na ako nakaka-comply, wala na akong training at all, the effectivity of my, my non-practicing status will be starting January 1 next year. But if this year ako walang na-submit at all, kahit may ako nag-apply, nag, nag kung wala ako na-submit during the year any CPD, the, the effective date of my non-practicing status will be retroactive since just January 1 of this year. Okay? Tapos yung length of status, it could be indefinite. Okay? So, question, paano po pag gusto ko nang bumalik? So, there's a requirement lang. If you want to return no, to your active status, first you need to check since when, how, how long ka nawala sa profession. If within two calendar years, Let's say, this year ako nag-apply, next year bumalik agad ako after one year. I just need to present a proof that I have at least 20 CPD hour. So, syempre, hindi ka naman babalik. ISACA will not grant you, again, your certification without a proof that you are capable, you have the capability, and you have the knowledge. So, you need to have at least 20 CPD hours. However, if you became, if you become inactive, no, sorry, you become inactive for more than two calendar years, mas malaki yung CPD credits mo. You need to have at least 100 CPE credits before ISACA can grant you or uh, revert you to an active status. Okay? Clear? All right. So those are the things that I want to share with you about um, CISA. So before we end, I just want you to have a sample. no? So could you please go to menti.com? So I would like to... Uh, I would like to you to have a, a short CISA exam. Just five questions, no? And I will give prizes to, to the winners. Wait lang, ha? I'll just unshare my screen. No, for the first prize, I will give you 300 peso, then 200 peso, and then 100 peso. Okay? Wait lang, ha? Wait lang. Okay. Could you please go to menti.com 7422-3581. Go to menti.com 
Then type the code 74223585. Again, uh, I'll just want you. I want. I just want to give you a glimpse, no, of of what are the CISA questions. So just five questions, very quick. Yeah. So we have three participants already. Again, you go to www.menti.com and then type the code seven four two two three five eight five. So for the organizers, you can also join, and then I'll just give the prices. No, three hundred, two hundred, and one hundred pesos. No, for the top three winners. Okay, I will be giving you 15 seconds to answer the questions. Okay, so we have nine. So maybe we could wait for a few more minutes. Ayan, so we already have 13, 14 participants. No, don't worry, but the lang naman yung mga questions. Very short questions. So you would have a feel what are the questions in the CISA exam. Okay, 17. Sige, let's wait for more. Ayan, we have already have ayan, 18. And everyone, everyone could join. Okay? So, ay, 18 ulit, bumaba ulit. Sige, again, go to www.menti.com. You can use your mobile phones or laptops no, in joining this. This is an sample CISA exam. All right. Sige, let's wait siguro mga until third, uh, 25 before we start. Ayan. Sige, join lang. 7422-3585. Okay, to those, o pwede bang pa-type sa Facebook Live uh, organizers? Baka hindi nila masyadong makita. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. So go to www.menti.com and then type 74 Two two three five eight five. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you, Prince. Okay, R four JPS. Ayan. Thank you, Wesley. So seven four two two three five eight five. Sige, let's wait for three more para thirty yung mga kasale. Okay. I also encourage the organizers not to join. Ayan. Sige, two more. Let's wait for the last two one. All right, all right. One more. Ayan, so na lang, 29. Ayan, 30. Okay, let's start. Okay, please hold your phone or laptop. So you only have um, 15 seconds to answer the question. Okay, the faster you answer, the more points that you get. So which of the following controls would an IS auditor look for an environment where duties cannot be appropriately segregated? A, overlapping controls, B, boundary controls, C, access controls, or D, compensating controls. Sounds familiar, right? All right, time's up. The correct answer is oh, letter D. It's a bit tricky, no? Oh, isa lang, nakatama. Let's see. Okay, sino ang nakatama? Oh, si R. So, congratulations, R. Ayan. All right, all right. Next. Domain, that is from domain one, IT audit or IS audit. Domain two is governance and, of, and management of IT. Okay, question number two. When segregation of duties concern, uh, concern exists between IT support staff and end user, what would be the suitable compensating control? So this is about organization. Okay. All right. The correct answer is letter B. Oh, marami nakakuha, 13. Okay. So those who got the correct answer, again, the faster you answer, the higher points you get. Oh, si R pa din. All right. Next, domain three, information systems acquisition, development, and implementation. All right. Question number three. 
the main purpose of a transaction audit trail is to Ayan. Okay. A, B, C, or D. Alright. The correct answer is letter B. So this is also important when you're implementing a system that there should be an audit trail. That should be a very important business requirement. Okay. Dapat sabihin nyo yun sa implementer dun sa IT. No? When you're implementing a system, there should be an audit trail to allow the management to review audit transactions, transactions in general. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Perfect. O si R pa din, our, our leading. Okay, next, second to the last, information systems operation and business resilience. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Ay, but wait lang, wait lang. Naka, na, there's a technical glitch. Okay, four out of five. Fourth question, I mean. An IS auditor reviewing an organization's disaster recovery plan should primarily verify that it is. Ano yung important attribute no, that an auditor should, IS auditor should check on a disaster recovery plan. So there, in case of a disaster, bumagyo, binaha, ano yung important factor? The correct answer is letter B, that the disaster recovery plan should be regularly reviewed kung responsive pa ba, ba siya sa mga threats and it's updated. Kasi outdated plan is sayang lang. No? Is ano na. Okay. Alright, alright. Okay, are still the leading. But for our last question, domain 5, protection of information assets. Okay, so we'll win our mini icebreaker or quiz. The first step in data classification. So for you to protect your data, you need to classify your data first. And what is the, uh, the important step? Siyempre, iba-iba yung ating controls per type of data. But what, is, what information is important in data protection, in data classification? Okay, the correct answer is number three. You need to know who is the owner of the data. No, it's very important. O, tatlo lang yung nakatama. Alright. O, oh, sinimo. Okay. Okay, so we have a winner. Sinimo, followed by R, followed by Ain. Okay. Congratulations. No, congratulations. So please uh, reach out to the R4 officers, okay, for your uh, prize, okay? Okay, so I'll just, I'll continue my um, um, last part of my presentation. Wait lang ah. I just need to reshare. <laughs> Okay. Can you see my screen already? So <clears throat> before I end, okay, thank you. Before I end, no, so what's a key takeaway? My message to you, okay? A lot of students are asking me, sir, if I take this certification, what would be the career plan that I have uh, I can choose from? No. My advice to you is it should be the other way around. You need to know first what profession or career path you would like to take. Okay? And then Take the trainings and certifications that are aligned to your profession. So you don't just take random certification and then think of your profession later on. No. no. If, for example, if you're in the space of IT audit, information security, no, you take CISA. If you want to take the path of an internal auditor, for example, you take CIA. No, if you want to take the path of being a fraud or forensics, you take CFE, Certified Fraud Examiner. That should be the mindset. Know the profession and then take the trainings and certifications aligned to it to continuously increase your knowledge. Okay, And then it will result to excellence. Because what you have learned, let's say what you have learned in the, your accountancy, no, in the program that you're into right now, some of them will become irrelevant or outdated after how many years. 
Okay, so you need to continuously learn no, about the updates. So learning should not stop no, in college, no, in the certification. Okay, actually right now while you're still a student, what you need to do is not to memorize no, and, uh, the, the topics, but rather teach yourself how to study. You need to have that habit. So later on, whatever topic, whatever career that you will be choosing from, you, you have already the, the, the mechanism in you or the, 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 the right habit and the right mindset and the discipline to study. Okay? So before I end, I would like, I would like to share you know, a, a quote you know, from our late founder, Mr. Washington Sisip. He said that basic credentials are not enough to ensure success in any profession. This means that learning will be as it should be a lifelong activity. So in our profession, no, fellow JPNs, we need to continuously learn. And sometimes we need to unlearn things, not to learn new ones. No, we, we need to be open. No? We need to be like a sponge, na ready tayo to absorb new learnings, be open no, to new perspective. No? And we should, be, um, we should allow ourselves to, to repurpose, not to be repurposed, no? to, to learn more no, about our profession. And we should not limit our focus on accounting. Now, because accounting in, is just one of the area of business. We should learn a lot of things outside accounting. Okay? If we really want to become a good advisor, business professional, no, we should have this right mindset. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for having me, our four JPNs. Good luck in your journey, and I hope to see you in a better working world. Thank you very much. And thank you, Sir Conrad, for your knowledgeable account talk. Yan, so, partner, no? <laughs> so after nating graduate five years experience, then you can already take uh, this kind of accreditation. No? Sabi nga, even though it's a little bit costly, sabi naman ni Sir, worth it naman ang pagkuha ng accreditation na to. That's why, guys, uh, you could uh, take consideration in taking this accreditation after we graduate. Grabe yung, grabe yung journey ni Sir, no, VJ? Talaga, yeah, bago niya makuha uh, yung mga nakakabit sa pangalan niya. Ang habang, ang, ang habang transition nun, ang habang journey nun. So, yun. Uh, now, we will open the floor for questions from our delegates that are watching in our Facebook Live. JPS, you can now comment your questions or clarification on our comments section. So, yan. Dadako na tayo sa ating open forum. So, Yan, if you have a so, question, please. So, so you know, partner, medyo dere tayo sa Facebook. So, for now, while waiting for the questions of our JPNs, I have some uh, uh, questions to ask lang po, sir, if you would mind. Sure, sure. So, I'm just curious po, what does it feel to have those titles after your name? And uh, could you give us some advice to students like me na nangangarap din po magkaroon ng ganun kadaming titles after we graduate? Okay, so at first, no, when I was young, no, gusto ko din maging mahaba yung name ko and get all the titles. But later on, I realized, no, that actually, uh, for me, uh, titles are just, uh, kumbaga in a product, it's just a packaging, no. At the end of the day, even if you have all the titles, no, if you don't know how to ex execute the job, people will know. Okay, so meaning certification should be backed up by actual experience and knowledge. No, as I mentioned to you earlier, um, it's very expensive, no, costly to maintain this. So of course, I feel good that I have this certification and it's backed up by actual experience. So meaning when I put it in my resume, in my CVs, and I go to the client and submit it, I know for a fact that I am representing uh, tr uh, the truth that I know how to execute the job. No. So um, I know a lot of you would like to, to gain all the titles, but then again, please choose the title that is right for you. And of course, it feels good no, because you know that um, you have a, a credential or you have proof no, that you have this um, certain qualification to perform such, um, let's say, a task or an engagement. No, so my advice to everyone, again, you need to first um, know or choose the career path that you would like to choose and then Look at the training, available trainings and certifications that you would like, you know, that you would like to, to pursue for you to uh, progress in your profession 
And I also uh, advise you to choose the right organization that will support you on this. But then again, because this is really expensive, not all companies are sponsoring such um, certifications and yung CPE credits. Okay? Yes. Thank you, po, sir, for answering my question. Yun po, sir, ako naman. I have, also, I, I have here a question din po. Sure. So, sir, what did you do? Whenever you're facing struggles in your journey, kasi yung struggles nyo ay yung journey nyo na pahaba. And more or less, there are struggles along the way talaga. There are miles. What did you do po, sir? Yeah, there are so many times, no, so many times that I almost in the verge of quitting. No? And you know, one, one thing that I have I've done no, that I am proud of is really to, to, first, I really prayed a lot, no? Because I really need divine intervention and guidance to give me the wisdom to think through. Then second, I I talk to people that are important to me, okay? That could help me. No, you also need to surround yourself with the right people who will tell you not just what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And the next speaker, no, Ryan Chua, is a very good friend of mine who is a very monumental, and he actually is the one who inspired me to stay in the firm, no, and. And sometimes, kasi if you're, let's say, if you're, especially if you're highly emotional, your cloud, your your judgment is clouded. So you need someone to tell you, even though you know what to do, you need still someone to tell you that this is the right thing to do. These are the options. But at the end of the day, you need to own the decision. No, these people, your friends, can give you a lot of um, information, different point of views. But those are just um, references and guide. At the end of the day, you need to make your own own decision. And I also feel that at this point, it's all important to have grit or parang resiliency. Now, at this point, kasi with the digital age, everything is instant. A lot of people, no, they also want instant glory or gratification, no. And but I encourage you, young students, no, to be more resilient and to have grit, no. Now, if you really want to 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 earn something or you want to achieve something, you really need to work hard for it. Because ako, I believe that if if you if you earn something no at, uh, without a sweat no it will also madali lang din sa you let go yon. But if you gain something no like in for example your course your CPA title talagang pinagtaguran mo dugot pawis no you it will be very dear to you you will do its best to protect it no because you earned it ah you earned it so you have to protect it. And yes. and, and and also in addition to that no you need also to um. Um, you need to remember that you're a human being, meaning it's okay to be stressed, it's okay to, to get tired. Sometimes no, it's okay to cry no, if that's your outlet. So, walang uh, superman, no? hindi totoo yung superman. No? So, if, if you're in the verge of failing, no, if you're pagod ka na, have some rest. No, Find time to reflect on yourself and do the things that you love to do. If ang stress reliever mo, kumain, lumabas with your, uh, well, lumabas. Uh, spend time with your family, Netflix, games, no? Find your, your parang me time, no? Because, ano nga eh, um, like in your course, no, accountancy course, no, parang walang pahinga talaga, lalo na ka nag jp pa kayo, you really have to know when to stop, no, and pause for a while. Okay, that's it. Yeah, sir. Thank you for that. Is noted. Talaga nga namang kapi lang ang malakas. <laughs> Masarap ang kapi sa R4, di ba? Malakas ang kapi sa, uh, lalo na sa Batangas. Batangas diba? po, yes. Yeah. <laughs> kapi lang ang sakalaw. So, yun po, PJ. So, yes, guys. Note natin lahat ng sinabi ni Sir Conrad. Kasi kailangan din talaga natin mag sometimes. And if you really want to achieve something, we need to work hard talaga for it. So, I guess there are no more questions from our JPNs kasi nga naman partner napaka-informative at kompleto na yung details na diniscuss ni sir. So that's why we want to thank all the JPNs who actively listen to the uh, talk of Sir Conrad and now I will be reading the citation for the certificate of appreciation for our speaker. National Federation of Junior Philippines Institute of Accountants, Region 4 Council, NCCIP Goddess Vilayo and Company, in partnership with Premier CPA Review and Professional Development Center and RESA, Review School of Accountancy. Certificate of Appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Conrad Alan M. Alvis, CPA, CISA, CIA, 
CSRS for sharing his time, expertise, and knowledge as the guest speaker during the Certified Future Accountants Day with the theme, The Making of a Paragons of the National Federation of Junior Philippines Institute of Accountants, Region 4, given this 2nd of May 2021. Signed by our RVP for Academics, Annabel Angeles, Regional Council President, and Caitlin R. Aguinaldo, Regional Co-Advisor, Mr. John Jarek Fernandez and Maria Leia Arguelles, and of course, by our Regional Advisor, George Matthew Makatangay, CPA, PSN. Once again, thank you po, Sir Conrad. Mula po sa aming sasilayag, taos puso po ang aming pasasalamat sa inyo. Thank you very much, NFJPR, for, for having me here. And thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Now, let's ex acknowledge our sponsor also. On behalf of the National Federation of Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants, Region 4, and Sisip Gores Bilayo and Com Company, we would like to thank the following sponsor for this year's Certified Future Accountants Day. Premier Professional Development Center. Review School of Accountancy. Taos puso po ang aming pasasalamat sa inyo.